Welcome to New Orleans, stranger. They call me the tourist. <laughs> In the chaos that engulfed this city, I sought refuge here, drawn by rumors of a hidden supply bunker. Tell you what, if you and I team up and locate it together, I'm willing to share the spoils right down the middle. Whether you're a saint or sinner makes no difference to me. Just remember one thing, as long as you don't cross me, this venture will be worthwhile for both of us. Oh no, no. <laughs> I've been a huge fan of the Walking Dead TV series, and loved zombie games such as The Last of Us, Dying Light, Dead Island, and even the Telltale series. However, what sparked my curiosity the most was the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners on the Quest 3. Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and today I'll be discussing whether Saints and Sinners 1 and 2 are worth it on the Quest 3. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! <laughs> After seeing YouTubers beat zombies up with a frying pan, I wanted to give this series a go and see the world of Walking Dead through my eyes on the MetaQuest 3. To give a recap of the story in Saints and Sinners, this game takes place in New Orleans where an outbreak occurred, leading the city to fall to the undead. You play as an unnamed survivor who goes by the name Tourist. You arrive in the city in the old man's base in a cemetery after he promised you half the spoils if you find a rumored supply bunker called the Reserve, filled with food, ammunition, medicine, and military weapons stocked fully in the event of emergencies. He also informs you about an all-out war in the city between the Tower and the Reclaimed, with both groups' desperate attempts at locating the Reserve and its content. The Tower is a large authoritarian group of survivors led by a woman named Mama who took occupancy in a large skyscraper. Due to the Tower's fervency at banishing any rule breakers or people unable to fend for themselves, they sent people to their deaths on the skyscraper or exiled them, leading to the formation of the second group, the Reclaimed. They're led by an ex-Tower member named JB, and they revered his words with cultish fanaticism while employing both voodoo-inspired motifs and brutal guerrilla warfare with the intent to overthrow the Tower. So walkers are the least of the tourists' worries, but they do shine in this game. The tourist spends the rest of the story in search of this reserve by working with Casey and Mae Benoit, an ex-Tower member in possession of the reserve key. The tourist eventually finds the reserve, and the story continues in Retribution, where they find themselves in the crossfire of the war between the Exiles and the Tower. The story had pretty good pacing in the first game, although I really liked how we're given more weapons in the second one. The size of the world in Saints and Sinners was huge, which was surprising to me but kept me immersed. With the little sense of direction I had, it did instill a bit of fear in me and encouraged me to memorize routes to return back to camp. Bourbon Street and Retribution felt very different and complex than some locations in the first game, as you can traverse bridges and rooftops to sneak into well-guarded buildings. It made me want to channel my inner Dying Light player and do some parkour. Oh, I'm almost there! <gasps> There's a lot of detail being put in this game to immerse you in this world. Scavenging is also a must in Saints and Sinners, although I figured out very late in the game that with each day wasted, supplies indeed do diminish and more zombies grow in strength and number. So I restarted the story and stopped being a chicken like my first night in Dying Light. <laughs> With the amount of resources you scavenge, you can upgrade your stations and build supplies like medicines, food, guns, knives, cleavers, axes, bows, and my favorite weapon, Lucille. Hot diggity dog, this fella's taking it like a champ, isn't he, Lucille? 
The weapons do have durability on them, leading you to stock up on resources to build better ones. Any weapons you find outside will break a lot faster than the ones you built yourself. You wield a backpack in which you carry your supplies, many weapons you can fit, and your gorgeous collection of zombie heads to take home and hang on your bus to scare off intruders and yourself to sleep. You had one job. Why did you let someone pin a note inside my bus? Come on, I even fed you spaghetti. You can also hook your favorite guns and weapons over your shoulder to pull them out when you're in a tough situation. Now let's talk about the stars of the show, the walkers. There are interesting details put into their designs as the old ones look more rotten, the fresh ones look more human, and some are wearing metallic masks. There are also gut walkers with their innards exposed, in which you could use their insides to hide from a horde, although they're not very easy to find in retribution. Sometimes weapons will bounce off the skulls of walkers, but once you land a melee weapon straight into their skulls, it's super satisfying. Their heads explode like chunks of watermelon as you lodge weapons into their heads. You can also grab their heads and toss them aside to give yourself a breather or provide them tower guards to eat. If your cleaver does not completely impale the walker's skull, you could always push it in more with your hand. It's very creepy when they grab you and you shake them off. And because of the game's immersive audio feature, it makes you more cautious when zombies and humans can hear you. Humans are more threatening as they have accurate aim with their weapons. I couldn't shoot the soldiers when sneaking into my first tower cache, but rather I trudged around them carefully. Later down the line, I was just massacring each and every one of them. Don't mind me while I take everything you own. You gradually become more confident in saints and sinners with better gear, but so will your enemies. Must not value your life, asshole! The tourist! Fucking A! Let's drop this fucker! So strengthen your character continuously by embarking on supply runs after listening to Channel 47 on the radio. Saints and Sinners also somewhat reminds me of the Telltale series. Not just because of this notification when you shoot a tutorial guy over and over again. If you've played Saints and Sinners, most likely you've done this before. Now that you've seen all there is to see. Now that you've seen all there is to see. Now that you He's the final boss, guys. Rather, it reminds me of Telltale because of how choices have an impact on how the story progresses. And some choices will be difficult. You don't have to do this. What's with the hesitation? Y you want me to shoot Quit this guy? What I did was horrible, I admit it, but please. I do think the hardest choice in this game would be just choosing what loot to stash in the 36 slots of your backpack but your choices will morph you as a character into a saint or a sinner. Saints and Sinners does a lot to immerse you in the zombie apocalypse. There's a day and night cycle, so you have to be wary of the time. Otherwise, the horde relentlessly pursues you. You have to wrap bandages around your arm like in The Last of Us to heal yourself. These details add to the intensity of the game while you're fighting for survival. Although this game is fantastic, there are some minor downsides. Sometimes I'll notice glitches like lagging or human AI mixing with zombie AI. Oh, that's terrifying. Occasionally when you use a revolver, it feels like your wrists are made of gelatin as the gun slightly sways away from the target on its own. On the other hand, the game has incredibly satisfying walker combat, fast arsenal, simple control rules and progression. What the series is definitely missing is multiplayer mode, as I would love to gather some friends and charge against a horde or a group of soldiers together. Nexus and OG Resident Evil 4 were my introduction to MetaQuest games, so I'm happy I chose Saints and Sinners as my next adventure. This is definitely a must-have for all VR owners. So is The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, and Retribution definitely worth it on the Quest 3? I would say so. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this, and comment your opinions below. Is Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners worth it? Thank you for watching, and that's all. I'll see you later, tourist. You feeling okay, tourist? That thought, heating up your brain? Gotcha. Seeing flames? <laughs>